Hello students, welcome back. Let's continue with the second chapter from your supplementary reader textbook snapshots. The title of the chapter is The Address. We had read till page number 12, fifth paragraph. And the last thing that we had read was that the narrator was recalling her old memories when her mother had told her about Mrs. Dorling and how she used to visit to the narrator's place and take away their precious belongings to her own house. She also recalled the moment when she saw Mrs. Dorling for the very first time, the lady with broad back, she called her, and then too she saw her carrying a heavy suitcase under her coat rack. It, it, is, oh, it was on the very day, it was on the very uh, same day when the narrator's mother told her the address of Mrs. Dorling, which was Marconi Street, number 46. Now let us read further. I had remembered it, but I had waited a long time to go there. Initially, after the liberation, I was absolutely not interested in all that stored stuff. And naturally, I was also rather afraid of it. Afraid of being confronted with things that had belonged to a connection that no longer existed, which were hidden away in cupboards and boxes and waiting in vain until they were put back in their place again which had endured all those years because they were things. But gradually, everything became more normal again. Bread was getting to be a lighter color. There was a bed you could sleep in unthreatened, a room with a view you were more used to glancing at each day. And one day I noticed I was curious about all the possessions that must still be at that address. I wanted to see them, touch, remember. After my first visit in vain to Mrs. Dorling's house, I decided to try a second time. Now a girl of about 15 opened the door to me. I asked her if her mother was at home. No, she said, my mother's doing an errand. No matter, I said, I'll wait for her. So the narrator says that she remembered the address, but she took too long to visit the place. She, uh, she also admits that after the freedom, she was on one hand not interested, and on the other hand, she was afraid of facing all those uh, old memories. She was also afraid of getting confronted with the past memories and connections that no longer existed in her current life. Now, connections were hidden in cupboards. She says that the connections, the emotional connections were hidden in cupboards and boxes. And it seemed that those memories were waiting in vain to be put them back to their original place as they had suffered all these years because they were only things. Okay, they were just things. Now, the narrator says that bread was getting lighter in color. So, this indicates that life was slowly returning to a uh, normalcy. It was returning to a normal state after uh, the World War I. And see, uh, Europe had to face uh, maximum devastation during uh, World War I. Thus, the indication that the bread now looked better it figuratively rep re it represents the slow resumption or the slow renewal of normal life after ending of the World War I. See, the narrator says that the situation currently or uh, at that time was much better and the threat of bombing or arrest by the Nazi police officers, this fear of being caught was no longer there in the people. Okay. Also, people who uh, kept or kept on running from one place to another in order to safeguard themselves and their families, they had now began to settle down in permanent settlements, and every day they uh, could look out of their windows on familiar scenes. Okay, so things were getting normal in the speaker's life, but one day she got 
a bit curious about all the things all the belongings that were still at that address the address of mrs darling now she wanted to see them and she wanted to touch them feel them uh, further see uh, she says after my first visit in vain to mrs darling's house so when um, she at first reached mrs darling's home she was not uh, welcomed inside okay it was her first hopeless visit and she decided to try one more time okay she decided to uh, visit that house one more time and when she reached mrs darling's house a girl of 15 years opened the door now the speaker asked the girl about her mother to which she told her she replied that the mother was outside doing some errands to which the speaker decided that she would wait for her mother to return in her house that was uh, mrs darling's house further let us read i followed the girl along the passage an old fashioned iron hanukkah candle holder hung next to a mirror she never used it because it was much more cumbersome than a single candlestick won't you sit down asked the girl she helped open the door of the living room and i went inside past her i stopped horrified i was in a room i knew and did not know i found myself in the midst of things i did want to see again but which oppressed me in the strange atmosphere or because of the tasteless way everything was arranged because of the ugly furniture or the muggy smell that hung there i don't know but i scarcely dared to look around me the girl moved the chair i sat down and stared at the woolen table cloth i rubbed it my fingers grew warm from rubbing i followed the lines of the pattern somewhere on the edge there should be a burn mark that had never been repaired my mother will be back soon said the girl i have already made tea for her will you have a cup thank you so uh, here the narrator now followed the girl along the passage and there wo- there there she saw a hanukkah candle holder hung next to a mirror hanukkah is the feast of lights a jewish festival which is celebrated in december here hanukkah refers to the candle stand which uh, has different branches and on each night of the hanukkah festival a new branch of uh, this uh, candlestick is lit okay so the narrator remembered that she never used the hanukkah they never used to uh, use this hanukkah candle stand as it was unmanageable for them now the girl the daughter of miss is a darling asked the narrator to sit down as she opened the door for the living room so as the narrator entered the living room she says that she stopped and she was uh, very disturbed at the sight of this living room she said that that was she was standing in a room which she knew and she didn't okay so both situations were there that she though knew the room but she says that she didn't uh, know it she was standing in the middle of things which she didn't wanted to see and the sight of those things burdened her she was very much disturbed with whatever she, she saw in the living room now maybe she says she gives us a, a, a few reasons she says that maybe because of the way things were arranged or maybe because of the humid smell in the room or because of the ugly furniture so she was scared to look at everything now the narrator then finally sat down on a chair which the girl pulled out for her and she looked at the woolen table cloth now the woolen table cloth caught the attention of the narrator and she uh, touched it she rubbed it with her fingers and her fingers could feel the warmth of that woolen table cloth okay and further she she followed the lines of the pattern um, that were on the table cloth and she then again remembered that there was a burn mark 
uh, that was there somewhere on the tablecloth which she says was never repaired when they used to use it in their house now then says the daughter of mrs dorling that her mother would be back soon and asked if the narrator would also like to have a cup of tea as she had already prepared a cup of tea for her mother to which again the narrator answered thank you okay now let us read further i looked up the girl put cup ready on the tea table she had a broad back just like her mother she poured tea from a white pot all it had was a gold border on the lid i remembered she opened a box and took some spoons out that's a nice box i heard my own voice it was a strange voice as though each sound was different in this room oh you know about them she had turned round and brought me my tea she laughed my mother says it is antique we have got lots more she pointed round the room see for yourself i had no need to follow her hand i knew which things she meant i just looked at the still life over the tea table as a child i had always fancied the apple on the pewter plate we use it for everything she said once we even ate of of the plates hanging there on the wall i wanted to so much but it wasn't anything special i had found the burnt ma- burn mark on the table cloth the girl looked questioningly at me okay so the speaker here looked up she saw the girl put two cups of tea in front of her and then she says this is her observation that she uh, that that girl mrs dolling's daughter had a broad bag just like that of her mother now she poured the daughter poured some tea from the teapot and the narrator observed that the teapot had a gold border on its lid she then opened a box and took some uh, spoons out of it and the narrator here complimented the girl the daughter of mrs dorling about the box and about the box and also about the spoons and she felt weird hearing her own voice she says that her own voice was sounding a lot different to her then then as the girl turned to give her a cup of uh, tea she asked if the narrator knew about the box further she added that the box is an antique according to her mother as their mother told as the mother uh, the mother mrs dorling had told her that that box was an antique so uh, next the, then the daughter of mrs dorling again pointed to a room and said that there were more such antiques in her house and asked the narrator to take a look at them now although the protagonist the speaker didn't need to follow her direction because she knew what she uh, what things she was talking about but the narrator glanced over the tea table she was occupied over there okay so she uh, glanced at the uh, at the tea table and then she again remembered how she used to fancy the apple on the pewter plate pewter plate is the plate made of grey alloy often okay so she is again remembering the old times while the narrator was observing all the old belongings of her mother of their house what mrs dorling's daughter shared with her mrs dorling's daughter shared with her that they used the pewter plate for everything and also once they ate of the plate that were hanging on the wall and the girl wanted to eat off that plate too but she says that it wasn't anything special see the narrator had a lot of feelings attached to all the precious things that she could see in the house of mrs dorling all the all the things which mrs dorling uh, brought from their house to her house here in put particularly the pewter plate she is talking about but the daughter the girl the daughter of mrs dorling had no such feelings attached to the plate or any other thing present at their house 
Therefore, she did not consider it to be very special that bit of blade. Okay. Now, towards the end of this paragraph, we come to know that the narrator had found the burn mark on the tablecloth and the girl looked at her in a question. Okay. Let us now read further. Yes, I said, you get so used to touching all these lovely things in the house, you hardly look at them anymore. You only notice when something is missing, because it has to be repaired or because you have lent it, for example. Again, I heard the unnatural sound of my voice and I went on. I remember my mother once asked me if I would help her polish the silver. It was a very long time ago and I was probably bored that day or perhaps I had to stay at home because I was ill as she had never asked me before. I asked her which, she, which silver she meant and she replied surprised that it was the spoon, fork and knife of course. And that was the strange thing. I didn't know the cutlery we ate of every day was silver. The girl laughed again. I bet you don't know it is either. I looked intently at her. What we eat with? She asked. Well, do you know? She hesitated. She walked to the sideboard and wanted to open a drawer. I look, it's in here. Okay, so what has happened over here? See, the narrator said yes and told the girl that when one is so used to touching things in one's house, then one hardly notices anything. Okay. And the narrator also says that people only notice things at home when they go missing or when we need it to be repaired or because uh, one has lent it to someone. Okay. Again, after saying all this, the narrator found her voice to be very unnatural. Okay. And further she says, she continued and uh, told the girl that once her mother <laughs> asked her if she would help her polish the silver and it was a long time ago when the mother had asked her to polish the silver that was a long time ago thing and on that day she says that on that day, day the narrator was very much bored and she had to stay back home that day maybe because she was ill okay so when the mother asked the narrator to clean the silver the narrator asked her mother what silver she was talking about to which the mother said that it was the spoons, knives and forks that she wanted the narrator to clean. But we get to know over here that the narrator was not aware that the spoons and knives and forks that they had been using was silver. So after listening to all this by the narrator, Mrs. Dorling's daughter laughed and the narrator said and the narrator said to her that she could bet that even she didn't know what the spoons, fork, etc. were made of. Okay. Now, the protagonist, the narrator asked to the daughter of Mrs. Dolding if the girl knew about them, where, about, about the spoons, whether they were made of gold or silver of any, or any other material. Now, here at this point, the girl hesitated and walked to the sideboard and she, she, she just went to a... a, a place where you know uh, in, in, a, in a drawer these things were kept. So she wanted to open a drawer and she said this to the narrator that she would see, she would check to them as they, they were kept inside the drawer. Okay, which again uh, is very, uh, we are able to understand that the girl herself was not uh, aware about the material with which these spoons and fork etc were made of. Further let us read. I jumped up. I was forgetting the time. I must catch my train. She had her hand on the drawer. Don't you want to wait for my mother? No, I must go. I walked to the door. The girl pulled the drawer open. I can find my own way. As I walked down the passage, I heard the jingling of spoons and forks. 
At the corner of the road, I looked up at the nameplate. Marconi Street, it said. I had been at number 46. The address was correct. But now I didn't want to remember it anymore. I wouldn't go there go back there because the objects that are linked in your memory with a familiar life of former times instantly lose their value when severed from them. You see them again in strange surroundings. And what should I have done with them in a small rented room where the shreds of blackout paper still hung along the windows and no more than a handful of cutlery fitted in the narrow table drawer? I resolved to forget the address. Of all the things I had to forget, that would be the easiest. Okay. So, here, towards the end of the chapter, the narrator suddenly, uh, it's when, when she was there sitting at Mrs. Dorling's house and talking to the daughter of Mrs. Dorling, suddenly she realized that she was getting late, that she was forgetting the time as she had to catch her train. Now the girl asked her if she did not want to wait for her mother, to which the narrator replied with a no and said she must leave now. Now since the girl was standing near the drawer to check the spoons and fork etc. So she pulled, she, she then pulled the drawer open and the narrator said she could find her own way and she walked out, uh, walked down the passage as she heard and, and, and back in the house she she could hear the ringing sounds of uh, the spoons and forks which were kept in the drawer and when she reached the corner of the road she looked at the name plate again and it said Marconi Street and she was standing at 46 now the address was correct she says that the address was correct but she didn't want it to remember it anymore she didn't want it to go back there as the things in there reminded her of memories which were linked with the familiar life of old times so she believes that old memories lose their value when you are separated from them and you see them again in a strange environment Okay, so they don't hold much importance. She also thought of what she would have done with all those precious things in her currently small rented room where she was living. Um, where, again she says that where still the blackout papers were hung over the windows and no cutlery could fit in the narrow drawers of that rented house. So she finally resolved and she decided on forgetting the address of this um, Mrs. Dorling's house as it would be the easiest thing for her to do. Now the very important question which arises over here is why did the narrator of the story want to forget Mrs. Dorling's address? See during the war all the belongings of the narrator's mother or of the narrator's house were taken by Mrs. Dorling who promised to keep them very safely. Now the mother of the protagonist died and all the possessions were left with Mrs. Dorling only. So years later the narrator decided to visit the house whose uh, address was given to her by her mother of course years ago. Now this woman Mr. Dorling showed no sympathy to the na na narrator and she didn't even recognize her. She didn't even allow her allow the narrator to enter the house. So she seemed like a woman who didn't have any human emotions and when the narrator finally saw all the possessions that belonged to her mother or to their house, they, she, she observed it that they were all arranged in a very tasteless manner and she lost interest in them. Okay, there, was n there, were, there were no good memories or good feelings attached to all those things, all those precious things. So she could not connect with the things and it was then at that moment when she thought that she would not stay at that house Marconi Street 46 at that house any longer and that she would uh, destroy all her memories that she had with those items and therefore finally she finally decided to forget the address and not to visit back to that place ever again. 
Okay, so this is how we have ended the chapter. <coughs> Kindly go through the chapter in detail, mark the difficult words and we will discuss all the question answers, NCRT question answers as well as all your doubts in the next session. Thank you everyone.